Good morning. Just taking in the view one last time of the glacier below. The mountains to the background. It's definitely clearer skies this morning. The haze from the forest fires that are to the west is sort of blown out of the valley. And we can see deep into the range. It's a really beautiful sight. This area here has been wind free as um, for our camp spot, so we lucked out. Our tents are all packed up, they're over there. And there's where we had breakfast. And now we are gonna be making our way up and around towards Atlas Pass. And then following, a, hopefully, the drainage or the ridge down to the Duke River. We are starting our morning hike. Pierre's doing some serious navigation and uh, just so big, so stunningly beautiful. Beautiful day. It's a wildflowers among the grass. It's just amazing. I have a watcher, mountain sheep up there, male with the torns. It's pretty impressive. He's making this hill climb look real easy. Making our way up to this ridge and then we hang a right and we go up and over the pass. Sky, looking back at Atlas Pass, making our way down this ridge line. And we're gonna be following this ridge line all the way down. Oh, there's the saddle and the knoll. And then we'll take a valley to the left, down to the river. It's a little bit scary, but we're managing, taking our time being safe. There's Renee up ahead, because she is a part billy goat, we think. Trying to figure out the red time. Then we go by the knoll, then the saddle, and then we drift down towards the There's uh, a little putting green down there in the middle of the wilderness. That's part of the directions they say you see the putting green. So we gotta follow directions really closely because this is really difficult navigate. So layers and layers of mountain. Gorgeous. Just big. We've made our way off of the pass and now we're following this river drainage for about six kilometers. 
until it hits the Duke. And then we're gonna go upstream of the Duke and look for a spot to camp. So the scary of the day has been done. And now it's as cruisy as a riverbed can be, but it's been great. My two partners, Sophia and Renee, are just great troopers. And together we make a good team. It's the easiest walking we've had yet down this riverbed. Boy, do we need it and deserve it. We are walking alongside the Duke River and we're heading towards camp. We've got about a couple miles, about 6.05, so we're hoping to get to camp by 7. Early night, which is wonderful. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. Very difficult, but absolutely gorgeous. Look, look behind us, guys. We have our tent set up. It's 820. Just gathered some water at the stream. And we are headed up to away from the tent site in order to make some dinner. We are starving. I have to make sure to cook and eat well away from the tent because of the bears. I saw lots of bear prints. Well, here we are. Morning of day five. Clouds have come in. So the mountains that we used to see up there. Yeah, you can see those. No, you can't see those mountains. And then over this way, this tall mountain with the little spire, you can barely see that. We're sitting up for breakfast, and then we're going to be going down the Duke River for the river crossing and up towards Cache Lake. Little view of the Duke River. Then we follow these game trails all up along the side of the river, eventually going to find a spot to cross it. But sometimes you get lucky and you get a really good, really good trail. in the Duke River. Well, we just crossed the river. A couple of braids were pretty shallow, except for the last one, right up to our waist. We made a little pyramid, was able to help each other, and we were got crossed and just got a little bit wet. Now we're gonna be hiking fast to get warm um, because that water was cold. So we finally came to the well-described but elusive dirt, or I guess it used to be a, a mining road. So we're kind of on a path right now. Walk just did a ton of bushwhacking, but kind of in this bowl. And it's just gorgeous with the clouds just hovering over the tops of the mountains. And uh, when you walk through or do some bushwhacking walking on a trail is so luxurious so we're just luxuriating and I think finally we're all dry <laughs> from our uh, river crossing that I took a complete dunk in so <laughs> anyway on down the trail this is Cash Lake Sophia is so excited She's been looking forward to this. It's just one of those kind of landmarks that we come to.
Hey, we just had lunch and now we're making down Church Creek. We have 15 kilometers to the highway, give or take, but uh, we're not going all the way there tonight. We'll go about 10 kilometers um, and st stop this short. We had lunch and now we're getting all the weather, a little bit of rain, a little bit of sun, just to keep ourselves, I guess, are on our toes. We'll check in probably when we get to our campsite. Down Copper Joe Creek. Maybe you can see Renee and Sophia shedding layers because of course you put on all your layers and then it doesn't rain. But this is the drainage for going down and we're making our way down still. This is just such big country. It's really overwhelming the scale of everything. We are sitting in the rain under a makeshift tarp tent that Pierre created so we could have dinner and hot chocolate. We just had our dinner and it is really raining as you can see the rain coming off of that uh, tarp over there and we are kind of hunkered down in some trees with this tarp over here and tried to get everything under it. So there's Sophia happy to see the had dinner and Pierre over there Good morning. It's a blue sky day. There's the moon up there. It's definitely dampy and dewy, but the sun is up. We're gonna move out to the flats over there, sit in the sun, have our breakfast, enjoy the heat, let our gear dry out, and then uh, get ready for our last day of hiking on this little section of our trip back to the Trans-Canada Highway where we'll hitchhike back to our car. We're just finishing up breakfast. Got a nice spot sitting in the sun. It's so nice after the rain last night, although everything is wet and soggy. But that's, uh, that's par for the course. There's our tent set up drying out in the sun. And the clouds that were created by the rain last night and the cool, cold morning. And then we're looking upstream. Heading in for our town day. So we've made, left the mountains and now we're gonna be making the flats the next few kilometers. In theory, you're gonna be on this road. Here is the example of the road. It is basically tunnel. a tunnel through the alders, but we're gonna be happy. So we are on our last day of our Kalani hike and just going along these beautiful mountains on this beautiful day. It was quite rainy last night, so we were glad we stopped when we did. But we've got maybe three miles to the road and then we'll try to get a hitch and get to the car and we're trying to get a place, we're gonna try to get a place and do a, maybe a zero day in Haynes Junction before we do our next trip. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what we're looking out ahead of us. Walking down a nice road. We are walking down the road to our rental car. We got a hitchhike almost the moment we stepped out on the road. Um, from a great couple um, 
the guy was from British Columbia and then the woman was from Rio de Janeiro. They do a lot of traveling. They had, actually had their bed laid out in the back of the van because that's how they were, that's how they stayed the night. They are traveling all the way to Alaska and they picked us up and moved everything around and let us in and took us all the way to the point where they couldn't anymore on this dirt road. So we were very thankful for that and still seeing stunning views as we're walking down this road. A little different day than the first day. I can see a little bit more definition to the mountains. We are back at our truck. We did it. We did the route. We survived. Yeah. You hear the Duke River, the one we crossed. Over there. Wanna... It's still pretty flowy over there, hon. Yeah? Oh, well, let's you do it again. See... You want to cross it again? We're going to have some lunch, lay out our gear to dry out, and then head into Haynes Junction. So we made it out of our hike and we are now sitting at a hotel in Haynes Junction. It's called the Kluani Park Inn, quaint little place with a restaurant. There is not much here in town and um, we are taking a day off tomorrow and then we're going to go back in for a couple nights. Um, so we're doing two nights at this, ho at this motel. Hotel. Yeah, I just want to flip around the camera so you can see what I'm looking at right on the patio of our little hotel room.